few seconds. Well, it's mailbag day with the cognac boys. Y'all know we gonna get into the mailbag, but before we do that, we gotta talk about these seven GMs talking about some they would like to trade Justin Fields. <laughs> I got mm. something to say about it, and I got a few questions, and C-Dub do too. Y'all know we're going to talk about it plus more right after this. Now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back in into another episode of Chicago Bears Central with the Cognac Boys on this beautiful Saturday. C-Dub, how you doing, my guy? Man, I'm feeling great. We can't wait for this game on Sunday, baby. Can't wait. You already know. But, hey, make sure y'all go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and follow the show on all social media platforms at Shy Bear Central. Y'all already know. But, C-Dub, that was a survey that ran around. We already know it was anonymous. They ain't going to put their name on wax. About seven not. NFL general managers who basically claim, came out and said they aren't convinced. Some of the comments they read like this. It will be a clear-cut decision to draft Caleb for me, said an AFC general manager. The fact that we're in year three and they don't want to exercise the fifth-year option tells me what I need to know. <laughs> then we had another guy come out and say, Caleb worries me, but he – he is definitely talented. It just buys you more time and a much cheaper contract to keep adding pieces to the team. We had another GM from the AFC say, when you pass on talented quarterbacks to lean into a guy's development, which the Bears did when they traded number one last year, you have to be completely sure of that decision to do it a second time. If y'all want to find out the real, the whole article of what these guys are saying, that comes from Yahoo Sports. C-Dub, what you got to say about it? First off, everybody entitled to their own opinion, and I understand it, but I just disagree with the reasoning from these uh, so-called GMs, if that's what it is. Uh, let's just give you a couple of their reasonings. It just buys you more time in a much cheaper contract to keep adding pieces to build this team, so you're going to continue to be cheap with the uh, most important position on the field. You're not going to have to pay 50 and 60 million dollars a year for Justin Fields to be your quarterback but keep on being cheap and see what happens when you pass on talented quarterbacks to lean into a guy developments I know a hundred million things wrong with this what do you mean a guy's development every quarterback that you draft you're going to be developing it's never going to stop developing you never stop developing so just some of the reasoning is just bullshit to me. And I would like, I would love to if we get rid of this anonymous shit and put your name on it, bro. This shit weak to me. I ain't going to lie to you, but when, the, when one of the GMs, they talk about extension, why we haven't heard from you yet, my guy, they have until May of 2024 to make that decision. See, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> May. Of 2024 to make that decision. You don't have to make it now. The season is still going. You still got four games left. They'll figure it out when it's time to figure it out. And with them garnering the first overall pick in this year's draft, why would you give up your hand right now? We it's want just... the hall. We want the hall. But yep. then number two, IAC Dub, this is going to be real brief and straight to the point. Number two, I can bet you, Depending on who the GMs are and what team they represent, they'll take them right now. I got a few teams for you. C-Dub, the Falcons be better off with Justin Fields? I know yes. he's better than Desmond Ritter. Let's talk about that. Would the Raiders be better with Justin yes. Fields over Aiden O'Connell? Yes. <laughs> I guarantee that GM will take them. What about the Giants who up on Justin Fields? Yes. Oh, y'all don't like <laughs> Danny Dimes. I don't even know how y'all gave him the name Danny Dimes, but we can continue. Oh, what about the other New York team, the New York Jets? Y'all bitch Zach Wilson a number of times, then brought him back to start, and it was reported by y'all media in New York that he didn't even want to come back and play for y'all, but he said y'all said he ain't got a choice, so he came <laughs> out and played. I guarantee y'all will take him with the Jets if y'all, because Aaron Rodgers is hurt. He might come back, may not. But that's all we ain't got to talk about, bro. And then uh -huh. I guarantee the Tampa Bay Bucks with that defense over there and those weapons on the offensive side, what can Justin Fields add to that? That's one, two, three, four, 
five teams that will take them right now and then for the media personnel. You will give up on Justin Fields, but you come out and say that Justin Fields can get you a first-round pick? Make it make sense. Is he bad or good? <laughs> Is he bad or good? Help they me. They just want the drama, Joe. They just want to manufacture the drama, bro. It's just crazy, bro. I understand, though. You entitled to it, your opinion, but it seems manufactured. Sorry. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. And the contract stuff, bro, is, is what it is. But y'all let, let us know how y'all feeling about the seven GMs. Enough for us talking. We want to go ahead and get into this mailbag. Hey, C-Dub, this first one is from this guy named Big Steve. Hold on now. Big Steve. <laughs> Big Steve. I heard of that guy before. Yeah. Uh, Rel, well, here's the voicemail. What's up, Bear Central? This is Big Steve out in Los Angeles. I just seen on a I just seen an article and I was looking at another podcast where seven general managers uh, uh, anonymously they didn't want their names mentioned uh weighed in on Justin Fields and all of them thought that Justin Fields should be traded for a second or a third or a late round pick and that um, Caleb Williams should be the man moving forward with Chicago. Me personally, I'm 110% against that. This young dude here in Justin, we got a gem. Chicago finally got something that we could be proud of moving forward. And it seemed like <clears throat> now that this young brother is showing what he's capable of doing, it seemed like the GMs are saying, okay, now is a good time to get him off and get something better. But What's to say that Caleb going to be better? I'm not sold on Caleb. I'm out here in L.A. L.A. not even sold on Caleb. Mm. So, you know, I just, I love y'all show. I love what y'all do. I love how y'all go at it. I love how y'all tore that dude down too the other day. Uh, I don't even know. He got a pod show and he talking shit about the Justin lovers or some crazy mess. But I like what y'all do, man. But I'm interested to hear y'all feedback on this with these seven general managers. And they are current general managers, too. So it's not like they're former. They are active general managers today, and they didn't want their names to be said. So shite town up, bear down from Los Angeles. Oh, bro. Shout out to Big Steve, C-Dub, right before you go. I just got to mention, like, Caleb Williams is very, very talented. Mm -hmm. He's very, very talented. But like any other prospect coming out of college, I have questions. Caleb Williams. This is just a few questions, and I believe it's fair, C-Dub. You let me know if it's not fair. Why couldn't Caleb Williams show up against Notre Dame? Why couldn't Caleb Williams show up against Utah? Why couldn't Caleb Williams show up against Washington? Why couldn't Caleb Williams show up against Oregon? If this is a generational prospect, shouldn't you be putting together generational performances against some of the best teams within your conference? That's my only question. And you can oh, take you, the floor, about. Oh, you saying when competition come, he start to, okay, I ain't even going to say. Okay, um, uh, shout out to you. We did discuss the seven GMs earlier. Um, I will say this, that uh, that it sounds manufactured to me. And if you're going to be anonymous, how can we even take it seriously? I see, I feel that we should never take it serious if they're going to be anonymous because they ain't take it serious enough to put their name on it. So why should we take it serious? <laughs> um, <Man>. bro. <laughs> you funny, bro. Hey. <laughs> that was a good one. I ain't even mad at it. But we're going to keep on chugging along, man. Thanks, Big Steve. Appreciate Steve. you. And, man, look. Just cause we just because we do a show together, that's what people fail to realize. We go at each other all the time. Oh, <laughs> and we get, we respect each other as men. We're gonna talk about it. You're gonna state your case. If you can't come to an agreement, you just can't come to an agreement and we keep no. moving. It ain't that deep. Keep bro. moving. It ain't, bro. It cannot it ain't be that, that deep. deep. For <laughs> sure. But this next guy, C dub, his name Travis from the West Side, but I'm Trav. calling him West Side Travis. That's your Trav. name, my guy. West Side Travis. Here's your what voice, man. Whatever, it's your boy Travis from the West Side. I'm calling in from Cape Town today. I have to call in because I'm sick and tired of the mainstream media 
always study talking about, so, oh, we got to get rid of Justin Fields. Justin Fields is all out the court to his fourth year. We need to get rid of him. I'm sick of it. People sound so fucking crazy. Like, we have three options with Justin Fields. He can either not, not get pick up the fifth year option, let him play next year, and then do what Green Bay did and just sign him to a one year deal for a little bit lesser and have him play, or we can pick up his fifth year option, let him play these next two years. If he doesn't work out, go and get a quarterback. We can trade him back into the this year's draft to get captain for next year. Or we can let Justin Fields play at, play and let him play out. People act like people act like they are willing to bet on the Bears when the Bears have a known history of not developing a quarterback. Like, why would we give up Justin Fields when right now he's currently playing above above average of an average quarterback? He's playing above that. So why would we take the chance on giving him up and trying to develop a quarterback when we have a long history of not developing a quarterback? I really find that stupid. Especially on a quarterback that's smaller and that's in college having the same problems that Justin has it right now. He's smaller, way smaller than Justin. Like, I really don't get it. Like, people act like Justin has to all be at this peak of this developmental stage right now. Some people take longer than others. Just, why don't people just build around him? I just want to call in for your thoughts and see what you think about mainstream media studies seeing this stupid stuff. You have a nice day, man. All right. So we appreciate you, West Side Travers from K Town, too. Oh, oh I, know, hey, I had a couple situations over there, but that's that that, that ain't the discussion. See, Doug, go ahead. <laughs> hey, mommy. Hey, shout out to you. I appreciate what you just said, and I agree with a lot of points that you said. My man, let me give you uh, a scenario right here. This is the national media that uh, the nature of the job is to get the most compelling and most dramatic uh, story. Here's the two story that's presented to you for the Chicago Bears about Justin Fields. The Chicago Bears extend Justin Fields for some odd years. Or on the other hand, Justin Fields is traded for a number one and another player. Which one is the more uh, dramatic and compelling story? It's obvious the one when Justin Fields get traded. So that's what they're pushing. <laughs> it's really that simple for me. And like I said, bro, Justin Fields is not a perfect quarterback, but aren't we tired of this damn carousel of moving quarterbacks in Chicago, bro? And my thing is, it's a simple, I wouldn't say it's a simple decision or a blueprint, but the way that I would think into the, all of this, let me flip that first round pick, build the hell out of this team, and then next year, you can go ahead and get you another quarterback. They're going to keep coming. They're not stopping. I don't, I don't like, bro, they throw generation around every single year. I was told Will Levis was absolutely outstanding. I was told Zach Wilson was absolutely outstanding. One of them is not even going to be on his team anymore. And the other guy, Will Levis, he's, he's making a he's making a case. But we still right. got to figure them out a little bit. Mm -hmm. But my last point, c up. what was the national media saying about Dak Prescott in Dallas last Shit. year and the year prior? Shit, Why no, no. can't Dak get it done? Mm -hmm. Dak needs to get it done. His contract is coming up. Maybe Jerry Jones should think about if he should want to pay Dak more money. And guess what they talking about this year? MVP. Now, all of a sudden, he's in the MVP conversation. Mm -hmm. That's just what's gonna happen, West Side Traff. That's just what's gonna happen. We yep. just need to have. We just need to trust to see what's gonna happen. That's why I ain't really spoke on it a lot. We'll wait to see what happens at the end of the season. That's how I'm gonna leave. So, all right, now we get into another voicemail. C Dub, we gonna go ahead and we gonna holler at Oliver real quick. Let's see what he got. Oliver. Hey, what's up, Hayes, Bobby? C Dub, Steve O, everybody else on CBC. This your this your man's Oliver from Miami. 
And uh, once again, like I said, patience is a virtue. Man, look here. I'm still celebrating the big win we had against those um cowardly lines, aka Snagglepuss. Put them up, put them up, put them up, put them up. <laughs> yeah. And like I told people, you know, all this talk about Justin Fields, look, I'm the biggest Justin Fields supporter and defender, but I also one of his biggest critics too. It's a few things what Hayes was saying was actual fact. And that's one thing that he got to he, he has to clean up on though. But now the thing gets to be consistent about it. Justin Fields and DJ Moe are right now the most deadliest combo in the NFL right now. And they couldn't get everybody on notice. But look, but and that defense, well that defense making me proud right now, making me very proud. All this talk about, oh, that's an effed up pick. We should have never traded for Montez Sweat. Man, look here. Montez Sweat has put a bigger impact on our defense than Khalil Mack did in 2018. Mm. Okay? Plain and simple. He literally trans single-handedly transformed that defense now. Now, if we can get somebody like my boy Jared Burst from Florida State, you know, I've got Florida ties. I got to stick with my Florida boys. If we get him to team up with Sweat and Kulich, it's deadly. But I'm still on, on ship with us getting Marvin Harrison Jr., but the, but also if we can't get MHJ, how about you look at the receiver from, uh, Washington, uh, Ozuni or whatever his name is. I forgot his name. Um, that's a, he's very, very good too. That's, that'll be a, a big target right there for them. But I just want, so we, the next four games winnable. Um, we got the Cleveland Browns. We can win that. Um, they put Joe Flacco back on the practice squad, which I don't know why. It's Cleveland. I know Hayes got his issues with Cleveland. <laughs> but um, we can take care of that. Besides, that's that's personal. It's personal now with that because remember what they did to Justin Fields back in 21 during yeah. the rookie season. Now you nearly had him killed. And so uh, Arizona, Atlanta, but the one team I want to beat more than anybody was Green Bay. And I'm still laughing at them losing to the Giants, and that helps our chances to secure that wild card spot in the playoff because, like, yo, we in the hunt. We in the hunt. But I'm looking at 2024 on beyond because shout out to Ryan Poles, shout out to Justin Fields, shout out to DJ Mo, shout out to All right, Oliver, it's a three-minute time limit on the voicemails, my guy. Please, let's keep it short. You know what I'm saying? You know, respect the mic, as my uh, my my, my great poets say. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but great voicemail, by the way. Yeah, uh, a lot to dive too. into there. You said that one of the big things you said Montez Sweat is having a bigger impact than Khalil Mack. Oh my That's god, good. That's a good take. I believe it's a good take too because I believe Khalil Mack came into a more complete defense. Montez Sweat came into a defense that still had some questions. We know they had players, but they had questions. In the impact, if you're going to ask about the impact, I know it's still kind of early. I might have to side with you on Montez Sweat having a greater impact. And then when you talk about those other wide receivers, first and foremost, I'm with you on Jerry Verse. I believe the Bears should take the best two positional players, not a quarterback. You go get to, If you're going to trade, I would say trade out of it, get more picks. If you can get MHJ, cool. I know it's going to be hurtful to C-Dub and a lot of other people. But if not, you still got Keon Coleman out of Florida State on your squad. You can get Versin Coleman. Or you can look at uh, Rome Odunze. Uh, I can't pronounce his name. My bad, my guy. But you got some options there. And they still, those wide receivers are still pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, good, good points you had out there, Oliver. And I just want to point out one thing. Uh, you said earlier, patience was a virtue, and I and I think you are absolutely mm -hmm. right. But not just pointing at Justin Fields, point at the defensive line, point at the the secondary. Patience is a virtue for them too. Patience is a virtue for this offensive line, and Matt. maybe even patience is a virtue for Matt Eberflus. Maybe. Oh, my God. Great way to put it and great way to end that one. I ain't going to lie to you. But C-Dub, we going to keep on pushing. This next one is from John. Hey, it's John. 
I'd like to make a point about the Bears this season. Um, everyone said in the beginning that Iberflus was a, you know, not a very good coach, and he may not be a good coach. But here's the point about what I'm saying is, like, we all fall for narratives, you know, as far as, like, oh, you know, in the beginning he was a, a bad coach or a bad influence on the team or the, his principle wasn't working or whatever the whatever the narrative was saying, you know. I think we get too sucked into that because now the narrative is it plays so good and so hard for ear flus, you know, because we've had a couple good games. But the truth is, in reality, in the football, you know, process of playing the football games, our defense has, has gotten better. So it's taking pressure off Justin Fields to only have to be Superman two or three times a game and not try to over try to do what he can do very well, but not to over try to do it. So really because of our defense getting better, that is what made the team has made the team better, putting the offense in better starting field positions and more turnovers are getting accomplished by the defense. So that's making our team better. Not so much the coaching or whether they play good for Eva Flues, because they probably did internally anyway. They probably played for him already. We just didn't think so because we were on a losing streak. So that's my comment. What do you guys think? Thanks. Bye. Hey, shout out to John C Dub. Get away. Hey, John, that was actually a great thought. And uh I think that we should give Eva Flus credit for that. Let's just think about this for uh Matt Eva Flus. He has been beaten the shit out of this whole season, bro. He has been getting destroyed in the press room. He's been getting destroyed on Twitter. He's been pretty much getting slayed and dragged all over the place. And every time he chums back and he's the same dude and his team is playing for him. So he may not end up being a great coach or whatever, but these guys, they playing for him, nephew. And he tough. Cause he got he got he got hit with some haymakers, nephew. We gotta he get got, him. He tough. Yeah, yeah. He got hit with some haymakers from us on Chicago Bears Central. Some guys over there that we rock with with the Windy City Breeze and a lot of other you know more national media platforms as well. But I gotta say this: Montez Sweat coming out and speaking on Matt Eberflus, it was pretty shocking to me. I'm not gonna lie, it was shocking. Mm. But it showed a lot about who the coach is. I know he annoys us at the podium when he answered questions, and we always hear about execution. But maybe, just maybe, he might have the post of this team. And my last point is, we've been asking for a competent defense for Justin Fields since he arrived. Yes. And I want to, this is my last point. Not many Super Bowl teams win Super Bowls without a good defense, bro. Mm -hmm. The numbers show it. There's a few outliers. It's always going to be when you talk about statistics and look at data. But most and majority of Super Bowl winners have top defenses. That's a start. So we'll leave it at that. This next guy, OC Dub, I like him. His name Tony O. He is the voicemail. Hey, it's Bobby C. Dub. What's going on on this good Friday, Saturday? I uh, just wanted to give a call in. I uh, got a question about the draft. Let's play devil's advocate a little bit. Nothing too crazy. Let's say in the event we do make a, a trade down or whatever pick that we have to sell, to gain more assets, to get more weapons for Justin. Uh, and Marvin Harrison is gone. Who are the receivers that you would want, uh, not as a, a, a second best option, but it's in the event that knowing Marvin is gone, who do you, who, who would you take? You know, who, who are you weighing your options on as a, as the, not the true number, well, I guess you could say somewhat of the, the pseudo number one. After Marvin, you know, is it is a Keon, uh, was it Keon Coleman from FSU or or Johnny? I think he's also an FSU uh, product coming out as well too. Uh, they got Romeo Dunze from Washington State. 
or Emika Ibuka from Ohio State. He's a pretty solid receiver as well, too. Or uh, Malik Neighbors from LSU. You know, I, I know Marvin is that is the, the that actual generational talent. But if in the event that we can't get them, who else? You know, are we are we looking at? What's your next best pick outside of getting Marvin? And uh, outside of that, nothing else. Oh, you know what? Um, you know, I. I I, I, I every now and then I get a chance. I watch the the press conferences of the coaches and stuff like that. I like how Getsy finally took some uh uh not I wouldn't say the fall, but he acknowledged his faults in in uh in, in a play call with putting DJ and Justin in that that bad situation on that fourth and one. She took the time out, but you know it's good to see there is some uh responsibility, but at the same time. Still got to go. I'm not that. That doesn't give you an excuse to stay, but it's just good to see that because I don't like how you threw Justin under. The, I want to say under the bus, but it's kind of like, well, Justin has the right to do that. That's fine. He has the right to change calls, but if the calls of he has the right to change are even good calls within that set, what difference does it make? Or he has the option to pull or read. If he's trying to make the best decision based on what he's given, you know, just because you have, you know bullshit and you have the option to change it from to something that could be great doesn't mean it's still not bullshit the playbook in itself could be bullshit but i digress uh like i said it's good to see that there's some accountability somewhere around there but hopefully there's a a new oc in town again tony yo just like we tell other people three minutes time limit get your thoughts out because the service we use will cut you off. But you ask who's the next best receiver? For me, it's going to be Keon Coleman out of Florida State. I believe he has. For me, I'm looking at a guy that gives me a different profile from DJ Moore. So if you talk about Malik Neighbors, he's a six-foot wide receiver. I don't want him on the other side of DJ Moore. I need a guy that can probably be a jump ball, a jump ball threat. You know, give me a little bit something other from uh, DJ Moore. First one up, Keon Coleman. And the second one after that, I'm looking at uh my guy from Washington and Rome Aduze. So, C Dub, what you got to say? All I got to say is I'm not looking into those receivers yet. All I'm saying is I'm looking at Marvin Harrison Jr. and him only, <laughs> and I might think about uh getting alignment if I can't get Marvin Harrison, either left tackle or defensive end. Uh, and also it was very good hearing uh. Uh, Getsy finally stopped throwing people under the brush and finally took it, even if a little bit, took a little bit of the blame. Took a little bit. Facts. C Dub, this the last one. This is from our guy, Fred. You know, we got to let him go. Fred. Cognac boys, what it up? What up, man? My bad. Bobby, C Dub, what it do, man? Kevo, Steve O, Hayes, man. Man, I love what y'all doing, man. I keep doing what y'all doing, man. I be telling my boys I'm about to show. I be like, man, y'all need to go subscribe, man. And, you know what I'm saying, get on this no-call shit, man, because y'all boys be hilarious, man, and I love watching y'all show. But, yeah, we getting down to the nitty-gritty now, man. You know, season almost over. We got the Cardinals. Oh, no, nah, we got Cleveland. Then we got the Cardinals. And we got, what, Atlanta and Green Bay. These games should be winnable, though. But, I, but like you said, though, hey. You know, Cleveland, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, people, I said Cleveland got a top top 10 defense. And then about him bringing Joe Flacco back, who got some experience, a veteran. But Joe Flacco is prone to turn the ball over, too, once you rattle his cage and get pressure on him on a regular dose. So I think the Bears might, you know, come out. It might be a defense slug fest. You know, we may get the win. You know, it may be ugly, though. But yeah, And I see your boy Jalen Johnson. I know C-Dub, we both was like, we need to let Jalen Johnson go, but – I see they talking about giving him uh, that extension or whatever, though. So, I mean, it ain't twenty million a season, which is good because he would if he would have got the six, seven interceptions, led the league in picks, he probably would have got that money though. And hopefully, man, Luke Gessie, you know, have a, a scheme against Cleveland so he won't get Justin Fields fucked up or he won't throw no goddamn twenty, thirty screens in the game and shit though. Cause I'm so tired of this fat face fuck as our OC man, and I heard y'all had that beef with this uh that Judah dude man. I seen that shit. I'm like, who the fuck is dude anyway? Like, why is you coming on somebody's platform hating or whatever? Though I understand everybody's entitled to their opinion. I get it though, but keep all that negative toxic shit over there, man. 
Like, don't nobody have time for that shit. Like, real talk, man. That's why I say I need to be on this show with y'all on the regular, because I know I go in and act a fool with y'all, though, man. But, yeah, man, like, I want to know, like, do you think the Bears might keep Eberflus, even though the defense is doing good and everything? You think they might secure him to keep his job? Or you think they might just cut him or demote him? Because I ain't never seen no head coach get demoted in the NFL unless they go to another team to be a D.C., though. So, and then, you know, I was talking to one of my guys, they was like, you know, what if the Bears trade that pick to the Raiders and we get Max Crosby? I said, yeah, that's good. I said, I mean, I won't mind doing it if Marvin Harrison don't come out to get, you know, hella picks. But I don't think the Raiders going to do that because Raiders don't want to – it's like they losing out on, on a lot of picks and everything, though, man. But we'll see what happens when the time comes. But right now, I just want to see the Bears possibly make it 9-8 and eight, and they take it, you know, one game at a time, though. So let me know what you think, fellas. Chicago up. Bad out of nothing. This your boy Fred. Enjoy your weekend. I'm out. Well, shout out to you, Fred. And I will say this, man. Anybody that's coming on hating, it's okay. I'ma just I'ma carry it like this. What did Cat Williams say that was so great? He said, if you tell this to all my haters, if you looking for somebody to hate on, feel free to hate on me. <laughs> and see, Dub, I, I feel like I just gotta end it right there. What you got for us? Hey man, uh, I just want to uh shout out to my man Fred. He always bring the heat, man. Oh, man. Um, and Jalen Johnson, bro, I just gotta give it up. He's been playing better this season. He has missed on a couple pick sixes. Would have put him over that. They would have had to pay him, but he gonna have to. He gonna have to bargain with us. We a tag his ass if you want to play with us. We <laughs> tag your ass. But look, I want to give a shout out to the Chicago Bears fans and the way you guys are temper, tempering your excitement. I know y'all see the road. I know what y'all see at January 7th. I know the opportunity that y'all see ahead, but y'all calm. That's so that we've been through a lot, bro, and we ain't finna jump the gun. We gonna take it one game at a time. But January 7th, that's all I got to say. Facts. I feel like that's a great way to put it. Shout out to y'all, man. The best fans, the best support system I've ever asked for right here. Keeping it a buck each and every day and week right here with Chicago Bears Central. Make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to call in to be a part of an episode like this, the number is 773-242-9336. It's another episode of Chicago Bears Central. I'm Bobby. That's C-Dub. We're going to catch y'all on the next one for sure. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Media.